All right, guys, welcome back. We have another amazing show. This is the Real Estate Marketing Roundtable. I have my esteemed co-host, Mr. Gene Volpe, Mr. Nick Sackis, Mr. Jake Wolf. Guys, this is going to be a show. We're going to be talking about forbearance, you know, marketing bubble, and micro-marketing. But first, here's your countdown. <laughs> God, I think I just get myself excited every single time I hear that countdown. I don't know who might have done that, Jake Wolf, um, but I love that damn countdown. And we're gonna be Jake Wolf. About- Jake Wolf did nothing of the sort. He did. He hired someone to do it. That's exactly what, what he did. Uh, okay, <laughs> Jake Wolf did not put together your countdown. He might have been responsible for putting it together. But that <laughs> dude was not part. editing anything. What's that's that? He knows all about important. being the architect, right? <laughs> I showed my new jewelry. Yeah, Dino, oh genius God. develops in multiple fashions in life, my good friend. No, that's, that's a good thing. It. A little bling bling. You like that ice? What, what is that? Architect. That's yeah. my custom made diamond necklace that says digital, digital architect. architect. Dude, you got to wear that right now. I'll put like, it on, man. Put, put it on. Get to be Snoop Dogg on the show. Go Guys, ahead, we're going to be talking about forbearance, mar- the, mar- uh, the bubble here in the housing market, and we're also talking about micro markets. Nick has so much coming out of his ears about this. He, I'm gonna have to tone him down a little bit <laughs> <laughs> because it, I mean he was brimming at the rim, you know, <clears throat> to talk about this stuff. But Gene's gonna put his eyes on. We're gonna move over to Mr. Jake Wolf. Jake, let's talk about which one do you want to talk t- and tackle first? You want to talk about forbearance, the mi- uh, housing bubble, or micro markets? Where do you want to start with this? And then Nick, I need you to shut up because you're just too full of it right now, and we can't have you hog the whole show. Okay, yeah, I got it. <laughs> so we uh we talked about what was that one email that we shared did you st- do you still have that email by chance or was that on nick's screenshot so we went ahead and talked a couple weeks ago about how there's more listings in the united states of america than there are real estate agents right wasn't that the article mm-hmm. that came out, yep, came out yep, yep. so uh that's a thing right now ladies and gentlemen that we're dealing with so what in the world is going to happen in 2021, we saw uh, the president go ahead and extend the moratorium for the forbearance folks because of the COVID relief package. He kicked the can down to while he fell up the stairs on Air Force One, by the way. Yes, that's when he did it. (laughs) Yeah, that's he's falling down, right? (laughs) Not not once, three times, three times. So is it? Sorry, sorry, Jake, my bad. Understood. So, uh, licensed real estate agents, Greg, Nick, uh, what are you guys seeing right now as far as the extension in forbearance and the moratorium hitting at the end of June? That's a good question, Nick. What are you seeing in the active line here over in Florida? And I'll kind of show you a little bit what we're seeing here in California. I don't think enough people are talking about it, right? Because I don't think people enough people know um, the situation. I don't think enough uh, emphasis is being brought in. Like Jake said, the can is just continuing to be kicked down the line. Um, it, it's a scary situation. It really is. There's a lot of people that are, um, that are late right now. They got sucked into this idea that they can just go ahead and, and kick their own can and not pay their mortgage. And then all of a sudden, once that hits, like we could be seeing one of the biggest gluts of inventory ever in the history of the country. Um, it's going to be real interesting to see how that plays out. Hmm. Uh, Gene, what are you seeing with your people? I mean, you are blinded by you know, what you see in, in in the public. So, w- what's your take on this? Gotta wear shades. Um, I. <laughs> if you guys are if you guys are just listening to us, yeah, Gene is wearing a ski goggles right now. That's why he's, he's wearing, wearing a shades. robe and a robe. His do is Hugh Hefner that's skiing. Gotcha. That's right. <clears throat> that's right. I'm in my alter ego. I so. I, I'm at an impasse right now, right? So I'm seeing things speed up over here. Like, obviously, in my area, there's, we're still in the market where 
everything on the market is going in two and a half days with 77 offers, 480 grand above, right? Um, so we're seeing a lot of that. And actually, here you go. That's Chris is, is not far from me. Uh, 1,998 homes active with 3,400 agents. <laughs> so there's w one house for every two agents is basically what it comes down to. Um, but I'm with these guys. I think I personally have been saying for a while that I think that there's going to be a coming to Jesus moment. And depending on the situation, we would talk about this a million times, Greg, you know that Yeah. Come, depending on what side of the fence you're sitting on, you're either going to be the have or the have not. Um, and I think that there's an opportunity here for people that are, that know what's going on and that have the systems in place, like the, what Jake puts in place for his folks to be able to attack before the stuff starts falling off. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that are going to be coming down the pike that you're going to be able to take advantage of. Um, and I think that's probably coming sooner rather than later. Hmm. You know, the, the Black Knight went ahead and produced a lot of this information, right? So if you pull that screen back up, take a look at the level of um, forbearance plans and the expiration dates, right? So down here in the bottom, as we enter the final week of the month, more than 460,000 active plans still listed with March month end expirations. Another 686,000 plans expire in April. And then, I mean, look at June. So it's interesting. It's going to be interesting once they pull the moratorium and um, we start taking a look at what the hell the banks are going to do. The National Association of Realtors talked about a balanced marketplace. It said a six month supply is associated with a moderate price appreciation. Okay, so basically meaning a balanced market is six months of inventory. Okay, 2008, we saw some pretty radical stuff. And I've got another slide to go ahead and share with you guys regarding the appreciation of home prices coming up to the 2008 market collapse and, and almost what we are looking at right now. So I don't think we're going to see a nationwide bubble, ultimately. I think we're going to see a lot of micro markets that are um, either positively affected or negatively affected by the scenario. And a lot of it has to do with the ratio of, I would say, rental units and unemployment rates inside of certain markets. So actually where you're at in Philly is a very interesting market. I was drilling down uh, just yesterday. Yeah, I, I would love to talk about some of that stuff, to be honest with you. Yeah. So check this out. December of 2019 the inventory of homes on the market was 1,390,000. Fast forward to December of 2020, we have 1,070,000 nationwide. Okay, so um, how does that equate to a month over month balance? So I broke down the math on all of this stuff. What we're looking at is pretty much a month's supply is right around 300,000. So ultimately, in order to get back to a balanced market, we need 2.2 million homes across the nation if we're taking a look at a nationwide balance. All right. So we're sitting well below that. But when we just looked at the graph on inventory that's coming to the market, I see some interesting things happen in uh, Q3, Q Q4, and then obviously next year. I think a lot of these forbearances are going to go ahead and people that are in forbearance right now, even if they're hurting, they have um, luckily been positively affected by home value appreciation. So even if they can't afford to go ahead and reenact their mortgage, these people aren't going to go ahead and lose their inventory. Most likely they're going to go ahead and sell it. So you're going to see a lot of these homes getting put onto the market, plus new construction builds that are coming. I think we're going to move over the crest of the mountain and we're going to go ahead and see uh, inventory increase. And then, there's going to be a little bit of a domino effect. I think, I think a lot of people that are possibly thinking about selling their homes right now, ladies and gentlemen are going to go, Oh shit, honey, we got to go ahead and put this on the market now because the inventory is going up. Home values are starting to go ahead and stabilize a little bit. So I think that's what we're going to end up seeing. That's the, let, me, let me ask you a question here. Let me, let me talk to you about another element of this that I don't think we've really talked about, right? Which is investors. So, so think about a, a local investor and Philly's big for this, where you got two, three, four, five properties where people are renting and the renters have lost their jobs. Can't you can't evict the renter because of this stuff, but something tells me in a lot of cases, and I've done a little bit of research, not a ton, 
But a lot of these investors were not getting grace from their banks. So in other words, they're still paying, they're still having to pay the mortgage, but the renters aren't paying rent. So what's going to happen when six months of this not not having rent and it's tough to get people out of properties in Philly um, and, the, and, the, and the people are standing there holding six mortgages that they're behind eight months on? What do you think is going to happen there? So I just pulled up another slide. This is the active forbearance plans. All right. So, uh, yeah, if you can pull that that comment off the bottom so everybody can see everything here. This is another interesting thing, right? When we look at the data. So when we talk about inventory, all of these uh, mortgages right now that are backed by the government and they have this kick the can down the road type scenario are inside your Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac areas, right? And your FHA, VA. But take a look at these other there is loans in forbearance of 676,000 that are not federally backed mortgages or notes right now. So those guys don't sit inside of that kind of a scenario. And yes, Gino, these figures also reflect the, the person that owns a multi-unit type property that now is in forbearance because his renters don't have to pay him. So he has to get forced into forbearance. So it's an interesting very interesting situation that's uh, getting ready to happen here, but the numbers are staggering. If you really go ahead and, and look at this thing. All right. Guys, so yeah, I want to ask another question here, right? And not to monopolize the time, but you're giving me some ideas. What's to stop us from having a relationship with a bank where we go, where we say to them, look, I'm your guy or gal. And I have the marketing system set up and in place as these, as you start to take over ownership of these, properties that are going to be foreclosed or we're in free foreclosure with some of them, right? As you start to take uh, um, possession of these things, we want to be your people to get them liquidated for you, right? Like banks aren't in the business to hold property. They don't want it. So they're typically going to work with people that are going to help them. Is Do I have anything in place or any recommendations for set myself up for like, if you do believe this is going to happen, and there's going to be an influx of properties that hit the market because of this forbearance. Is there a situation we can put ourselves in to be ready for it? And that we're the, we're the guy or gal at the forefront of that. Relationships are so damn important in real estate, right? Relationships with your title rep, relationships with different people at community banks. Okay. Establishing rapport with people that might be in a situation, especially at the community bank. You're absolutely right. Everybody that's been doing uh, real estate back during uh, the housing collapse in 2008-09. Banks were having these REO properties like crazy. They were fire sailing homes. Um, I actually had a meeting with a gentleman that owned Heartland Bank in central Ohio in his boardroom. And it was pretty much about exactly what you're suggesting. Uh, if you can become a resource to go ahead and help these people take property that they pulled back um, and then get them closer to a retail type scenario. I don't think we're going to see the old school. I think they called it uh, jingle mail back in the day, right? So people were uh, literally like, housing market just went in and took a shit, keys in the mail. <laughs> That's why they called it jingle mail and they left. So a lot of these banks were like, oh, sh what am I going to do about this? So yeah, relationships with banks, especially community banks are always good inside your local marketplace. But guys, we're, uh, we, we take a look at data so that we can go ahead and be best prepared data doesn't lie and we can go ahead and, and see some of these things stacking up. So it's a domino type effect. We're going to have forbearances coming into the inventory market. We're going to have homeowners that have high appreciation and equitable positions in their homes coming into the market before all of a sudden the home value drops. Uh, we're going to have new construction coming in. Okay. So it'll be interesting. Um, but I would say, take a look at your, your local marketplace. It's not going to be a nationwide scenario. It's going to be more of a, a micro type market. If you see a lot of people coming in, perfect example, Geno's in Philly. New York has got a whole bunch of issues. People are coming to Philadelphia because they can go ahead and commute back to New York. All right. So um, interesting, interesting marketplaces. Okay. Yeah, I, like so, the, I like to localize what you were talking about, right? Because it, it is micro. Like for Florida, right? I'm in Tampa. The top three relocation destinations in the country right now are Orlando, Tampa, and Miami. Like we're not going to have that big of an issue when it comes to 
the scarcity effect because there's just not there's five people for every one house that wants to buy in in Florida. So it's always there, there's always that that micro effect where people read headlines on a macro about all this stuff happening. Um, but yeah, I, li- I like Jake's approach of of the numbers don't lie. Um, but this goes into like we are the marketing roundtable. What can you guys be talking about to educate your people, cold audiences that don't know you? So instead of like posting, hey, I just sold this house for $20,000 over asking price, which every real estate agent that has a listing right now is getting those results. It's not unique anymore. People see that and it just, it just glosses over their head. It doesn't matter. How about you start talking about the forbearance and then tie in the fact that you could still get record sale prices for your house. And if you're in this scenario where you might be in this trap of you've missed a couple of mortgage payments, that's the hook. That's the problem. So you, you have the problem, you agitate that problem, and then you give them a solution, which is let's get your house sold before your forbearance is called. So l- let me ask you this, because I think you make a wonderful point. And, and I, I want to say this is what I think happens a lot. I, I don't say I, I think. I know this even from personal experience. So, Nick, you people don't tend – to announce their failures or their troubles, right? Like you're not going to find somebody that's get put into live video together going, Hey guys, just checking in today. Wanted to let you know that, you know, you're looking at me in my kitchen. You're not going to be much longer because I'm in forbearance and I can't pay my mortgage. So like you, you don't, you're not going to see people announce that. How do you become the authority on saying to people this, Hey, I'm your guy in this area. I, I can help you with, or gal. What's that? Or gal. Well, yeah, or gal. Yeah, when I, yes, I'm saying speaking from my perspective, right? So I understand how this works. I can be your, your asset manager slash financial helper, right? Whatever it is. I want you to know that you can come to me and, and quietly let me know about the things you're going through because you might actually have options. Like, it's because the thing is, is that you're not going to, Dave says, don't worry, Zillow announces it for them, but not in all cases, right? And you got to be searching. But I think that there's an opportunity for you to get in people's space as their advisor, their trusted advisor, who will keep everything quiet and let them know, like, look, maybe you don't have to sell. Here's three options. Did you talk about these five things? Like, could, did you call the bank? Oh, you didn't call the bank yet? How come? Like, maybe there's other ways to follow some of your, I mean, there's, there's, tricks of the trade that are legal that you can handle, right? But if people don't know what they don't know, and they're certainly ashamed to tell other people, how do you get into that space and become that advisor? That's become exactly the expert. What... Go ahead, Jake. Sorry, buddy. That's all right. So videos of value, educational videos to go ahead and talk to people about what happens if you're 90 days late, plus 90 days late, what forbearance means, um, how you can go ahead and help in these situations. So it's about being an educational ambassador, being the expert, right? So what we do at the Clever Nation is we have a whole bunch of videos suggesting the educational resources where uh, the agents can go ahead and fill in the blanks, shoot the video. We get them all on um, the websites. And ultimately, the best relationship is that title. These people know when anything goes on those deeds or associated to deeds, any liens, any type of change. And... If you have that address, <laughs> we can go ahead and start having uh, gain rapport with these people and start having conversations. Ultimately, if they're checking you out, uh, they can see that you specialize in helping people that have this situation. And uh, we all know somebody who absolutely crushes it. Miss Ashley Chapman rolls hard, deep in the NOD side of the house, uh, specifically with this uh, tactic. And her website is set up just perfect talking to these audiences. And uh, she is, she's crushing it. So what happens sometimes? People are in forbearance. They lost their job. Uh, They don't have the ability to maybe make a mortgage payment. They're praying that the loan gets modified. But if uh, you guys can go ahead and come in, uh, analyze the situation, go ahead and possibly reinstate the mortgage and um, have these people sell or list the home, uh, put a lien on it. There's a lot of opportunity here, ladies and gentlemen. And there is a huge pool of people that are inside this scenario right now. So that's the interesting thing, right? And 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 I think I'm not a hockey fan per se, even though uh, Tampa won the Stanley Cup, uh, you know, whatever, no big deal. 
Um, but I think yeah, Wayne, let's throw that out there. Mm-hmm. I think uh, you know Wayne Gretzky. I think was the one who coined the term of skate to where the puck is going to be, mm-hmm. right? And so he wasn't the biggest, he wasn't the fastest, he wasn't the strongest, but he was always right where he needed to be. And I think that's what this topic kind of brings up. We know that there's this big tidal wave of events that could be happening shortly. So what can you do to educate people to let them know that you are the expert in this scenario that will help them so that when, and this is not like when I say do a video, right? This is like a series of videos that you could be doing for the next three months. Five, like your focus, your talking points could be like you could create a whole series of shows, you know, for Barron's Fridays, like brought to you by whatever, Keller Williams. And, and you go into these are all the different scenarios. And having that mind share when you when you become the expert in something, you just instantly get that mind share. And then you start to get a community behind you and then you can run ads to people. And it's it's that simple. Like it's just skate to where the puck is going to be. We know this is an issue. We know what's on people's minds. Like Gene said, they might be afraid to actually raise their hand, especially if you have a relationship with them and you're there in your database. They're not going to want to call you and say, hey, man, I'm three months late on my mortgage. Can you help me? No one's going to make that phone call unless you've been educating people in the process and like how you are the expert in this scenario. Then that's when you can get people to reach out to you and say, "Okay, man, I'm actually stuck. I saw your video the other day. It was really good. Um, I need your help. Let me ask the last question. So. I think I think maybe we lost McDaniel. He might have fell asleep at the wheel. Um, Pre foreclosures, Liz no, pendants are public record, and yes, Zillow has them all posted on their site, which I feel bad for those homeowners who are struggling. That's from Dave Joslin. What's to stop me from going and pulling that info? Nothing. Right? Like, should people be doing that as we're talking? Yes, they should be. And I'm right. looking, and I didn't. You didn't lose me. I was looking for a website I that I wanted to recommend. That. I'm just teasing. You know that. <clears throat> I'm crooked today, ain't I? Yeah. Look at I don't my know shelf. How to answer that. No, no, look at my shelf. Pre-stroke. Oh, oh, you are crooked today. Right? What is going on with you? My camera's a little goofy right now. <laughs> Manka, what up, homie? Nobody oh, noticed no. you brought it up, Gene. Now that's all we see. I know, yeah. right? I'll, I'll fix it while I'm off air. Well, it, it, the funny thing is, is I, we actually had an earthquake here, a very, very small one this morning, but maybe it rattled you all the way across the country. You never know. I feel right? you. You know that, right? What happens to you happens to me, my brother. All right. So let's keep, let's keep going. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the bubble then. Um, with, with the whole forbearance thing taking place, where do you guys feel this bubble is going to take place? And then how can you maximize the opportunity to help families that are going to be caught in this tidal wave? Jake is raising his hand. Yes, uh, Jake in the back. Yes, sir. <laughs> Why are you pointing? Who are you pointing to? <laughs> Nick? He's but, muted. I don't I, know. He's muted. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing the mime show again. I don't know what happened. I am muted. <laughs> I am muted. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing the mime show, he said. <laughs> <laughs> if you could pull in my screen, I'd greatly appreciate it. Let's talk about this. Oh, that's what you're okay. pointing at. <laughs> Why'd you just say that? <laughs> there we go. There okay, so annual home price appreciation by calendar year. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, this stat right here was 2000, right before the housing market collapsed in 2008. You can see how we just dropped down, right? So what happens in a market? All of a sudden you have appreciation, appreciation. Obviously this whole world was because of the secondary note market, no doc loans, uh, stated income. They were just flooding, right? Everybody was grabbing. Mm-hmm. So now we came out of 2011, 2012 after the dust went ahead and cleared, and we started to go on a hardcore bull market run. But this is interesting. So 2019, you can pretty much take a look back at standard appreciation, all right? Coming all through these years, a 10 year run, all of a sudden 2020 hits and prices go through the roof, all right? Because of what? Inventory. Inventory issues, low uh, Fed rates, things like that. We have massive rapid increase. So when we crest the mountain, ladies and gentlemen, what's what's going to happen? The data doesn't lie. It's, it's not. We are looking at an inflation in appreciation of home values because of our inventory situation. 
we just looked at the data sets. We know that a $2.2 million or 2.2 million homes on the market is a balanced market. So we're looking at forbearance very closely. The numbers are staggering, huge, plus with new builds, plus with people wanting to go ahead and make sure that they can go ahead and sell, get their money before we go over the hill and start having a more balanced market. And it's going to be a scramble. Plus, uh, for any of you folks that watch the stock market, um, there the stock market and the strength of an economy has always been based upon true core supply demand. We've been looking at um, uh, jobs, things like that. So what happened last year? The government went ahead and said, go home. Everybody go home. And then a lot of people went ahead and lost their jobs. Still, businesses are boarded up all over the place. All right. So there's a lot of work from home type folks. I would say keep a very close eye on unemployment rates inside your marketplaces in comparison to rental units, in comparison to actual owned property. And based upon this data set, we know we're going to find the top of the mountain to go ahead and balance out this inventory situation. It's going to happen. Whether that's at the end of this year or coming into next year, something's going to happen. Keep a close eye on it. So this is another thing that you can do, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead and talk to people who are possibly thinking about selling their home because home prices are at an all-time high and say, you don't have much time. At some point, we're going to go ahead and come across the top of the mountain. So, look, this is nothing to go ahead and scare, especially anybody in real estate right now. You guys should be blessed because right now is such a competitive marketplace in all marketing, communication, videos, social, to go ahead and get more, more market share in comparison to your competitors. People that don't educate themselves and educate your prospective consumer will end up starving. Real estate agents, if they don't take massive action, will end up falling out of the marketplace. But look, this is information that you guys need to absorb, get in you. Go ahead and take a look at Black Knight. Take a look at all the mortgage data. Take a look at your micro markets and then just get after it. <laughs> Once the inventory situation does start to balance itself out, there's going to be more opportunity. But as with an up market versus a down market, you need to become an educational ambassador of your industry so that you can go ahead and arm all of your prospective consumers with the right knowledge for the moment. So it's, uh, it's going to happen. Real estate is real estate. Homes will always sell. People need places to live. We just have to arm ourselves with the power of knowledge. So, I agree, hundred percent. Nick and Gene, what, you guys want to weigh in on that on the bubble? I think again, going back to just the marketing side of things, right? It, it's talking about the things that people are thinking about. I, I think is one of the most powerful things you can do, right? And 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 gives you the ability. And going back to your database of the people that already know, like, and trust you need to know that you are in this, in the thick of it. Right. Um, so talking about all these, these topics that might not be on your local news, um, you become the instant resource for your people of this knowledge. It just, it siphons business into your world. Um, and it, I, we talk about videos all the time. I, it doesn't have to be videos. If, if you want to just do text posts um, on social, again, we went back to email last week. You know, having that email news uh, letter once a week uh, to your people with these consistent updates is, is really, really powerful. I, I don't think that it's going to be like 2008 when everybody woke up and their mortgage doubled. You know, it, it's like the adjustable rate mortgages and all that, the, the shenanigans that went on. Um, again, I, I'm not a, a, a genie or anything, but I don't think things are going to allow that to happen. I don't think the government's going to allow that to happen with these forbearances. I think the can is just going to be... Uh, continue to be kicked down the road. Um, what I do think, though, is working from home, there's a lot more people that are getting an active real estate license now because it's it's the, the American dream to work from home and own your own business and all that stuff. So you have to differentiate. You have to start thinking about how you can be that person in your market to have relevant content, to, to become the expert and talk about the things that people are thinking about in order to show that you know what's going on and that you can help. Cause at the end of the day, like it's not about bragging about yourself. It's about helping as many people as possible. How do you help as many people as possible get out of their situation or better their situation? And if you wanted to do like from the ad, like what people talk about now, like in this market in Tampa, I could say specifically, yes, I can get more money from my home now than ever, but where do I move? 
Mm-hmm. Like I have nowhere to go. That's always a consistent topic. If you're out of, if you're in another state, like building relationships with other real estate agents that are out of state now for that referral network, that's that's really really powerful because if you can be that resource and say, hey, if you guys are thinking about moving to Tampa, I know a real estate agent over there that'll take care of you. You can get the hell out of uh, Philly because we can get more for your house now and then move over to Tampa. Like that kind of communication is really really good. Doing collaborations with other people other agents outside of state and building that relationship because there are more people now hopping states than ever before. I love it. 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 Lots of good knowledge here. We have a question from David here. Real quick. He's asking, is there really a, a, a housing bubble though? So guys, is there really a housing bubble in your opinions? And I I have my opinion. I'd love to hear your, your guys' thoughts first. I'm actually watching the Philadelphia market pretty close right now i think it's uh for for me i'm waiting for the perfect opportunity to go ahead and purchase some um some rental property inside of philly so it's going to come around i've got some interesting stats and uh dave i'll share that with you since you're in the philly market okay wait are you seriously hold on you seriously talking about buying rentals yeah for real (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm All keeping right. a close eye on it. I think uh, the opportunity is going to hit right around February of next year for me in Philly. You you know that's that's me, right? Yes, oh, cool. we yeah. know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just, just putting it out there. Uh, uh, David knows an agent. Uh, yeah. I'm still in, David's like, uh, big hand raise. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so we're covering our bubble. Uh, Nick, Gene, and Jake, you guys have all kind of weighed in on the bubble, yeah? Let's go to micro markets and how powerful micro markets can be for uh, marketing now, both pre and post um, the 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 you know the potential bubble that might happen. Um, so let's let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, Nick, since you were talking last, let's go to you first. Uh, micro markets, talk me through this. I mean, I. I- I just kind of touched on that, right? Is, is being relevant, having, we, we've talked about this several, several times of being the digital mayor in your town, picking your farm and just rocking the shit out of the information, all the new listings, everything that's going on in that town and being the mayor. And I think that goes back to micro strategy, cover your area, cover your farm, and then figure out where you're going to publish that content, whether it's email list, email broadcasting, YouTube channel with relevant keywords. I use TubeBuddy, by the way. I know, I know we haven't really pitched that many things on this channel um, or on this this live show, but I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but it's a really good resource if you want to build up your YouTube channel. If you want to see what other popular channels are doing um, with keyword research, with um, you know, basically the easy button for uh, building up your YouTube channel, right? Uh, I highly recommend them. Um, keyword competition, all that good stuff. So that would be your distribution, right? So, or Facebook or Instagram. I like Instagram as well for the hashtag side of things because you can be really intimate with your hashtags going on Instagram live and doing very short content there. Um, Or if you're completely afraid of the camera, just do regular posts, but try not to have the scatter approach. When we talk about micro marketing, we gotta be very consistent. So one message, one offer, one audience for an extended period of time. What does that look like? 30, 60, 90, a year, you know, it could be an entire year of your digital farming. If you were sending out postcards to a farm, you would send it out for a year before you expected return. But for some reason we shoot one video on social media, we don't get a listing and all of a sudden we think it doesn't work. Be consistent, have one offer, have one audience, become the mayor of your town. I like it. I like it a lot. Gene, your thoughts? I wish you would stop telling me what to do. I'm already the mayor. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> my thoughts uh no i don't have any thoughts i'm still i'm still caught up on what jake was saying a minute ago <laughs> i got my eye on you wolf i know hey take yeah. a look at my screen you guys remember when we had that thing said emails not dead take a look at that campaign it was a couple weeks ago yeah <clears throat> emails not dead it's hard to see wait read it read it off it's hard to see yeah 970 emails delivered 701 opens, my friends. 20 link clicks, and we ended up getting five full leads off of it. Damn. Emails. Damn. That means Jake is really good at subject lines, getting people to open up emails. <laughs> it's important. 
yeah. right? The content inside is good, but the subject line is very, very important. One day, Nick, I'll show you my black book of tricks. And I want to, I want to see behind the scenes. <laughs> that was Maybe. we're getting a little too little too personal. <laughs> All right. So my opinion regarding micro markets, um, I would say take a look at the flow of people. Are people leaving your town or are they coming to it? So that's a, a big indicator right now. Take a look at uh, unemployment rates. Take a look at uh, number of housing units owned, number of single families owned. And um, I always love what Nick says as far as being the digital mayor. So. It's about educating your audiences, ladies and gentlemen. You have to do it. Can't just be the real estate agent on a website that has a nice picture, says hi, I'm realtor. Can't do that. So you got to get into the mix. Get into being a teacher, an ambassador of your craft. So that's my suggestion. Just get out there, stand on the throttle. Okay. Let's talk about that a little bit. So when it comes to being a master of your craft and being an educator and everything else, where would someone, you guys are master marketers. That's why I have you guys on the marketing round table. Um, and if we want to market, but not do it in a, in a advertising manner, but more in a educational manner, um, I'm going to start with Jake, since you just finished talking, um, what would be something that you would do uh, given the fact that we've talked about the forbearance, we've talked about the, the micro bubbles that are going to be in our different marketplaces around the country. And then how can we get out, get out in front of our competitors uh, and really bring value to our, 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 our coworkers, our friends, our families, our neighbors, you know, our, our local businesses? How can we create content without breaking our back? Because a lot of people get afraid of creating content because they, they think that the fact is going to be like, oh, my God, I have to do all this work. When in reality, you don't don't have to do all that. So check out the next stab at this. Then we're going to Gene, and then we're going to go to Nick. So, Jake. My favorite content is educational, consumable content, all right? So um, you don't have to be pitchy. That's not the game of real estate. The game of real estate is about literally educating your folks on what's going on. So um, it's time to go to school, ladies and gentlemen. And I do firmly believe that ye who puts in the hard work to go ahead and produce consumable content We'll win the race. We'll win at the end of the day. So um, work with your teams if you have any. Uh, work with other people. Bring in folks from Title. Bring in folks from uh, the mortgage company. Shoot some consumable content. What's going on? Uh, frequently asked questions that you find yourself uh, answering during the buying process, selling process. What's going on? There's so much to talk about, ladies and gentlemen. But I firmly feel... If you put in the hard work, you're going to go ahead and win at the end of the day. So if you're saying it's too hard, if it's so, oh, it's necessary, you're in business. Be a businessman or businesswoman and get after it. So nothing in life really comes easy. So we're not McDonald's over here, ladies and gentlemen. We're, uh, <laughs> we are real estate professionals that have competitors in our local marketplaces at a very high number that are putting out noise. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much so. Gene, thoughts? Well, first, let's make sure that the people that are listening to this on audio um, only are actually getting those little nuggets that Sackus is putting up there. So he's got two links that went up there, www.howmoneywalks.com as well as trends.google.com. Now, I'm not familiar with either of these, but I can tell you that if Dick Trackus is putting them up there, you can rest <laughs> assured that Dick Trackus is using those links and you should take a look at them, right? I, I trends.google.com I know about. Oh, whoa. <laughs> whoa, Tiger. And right. he's got his shades on. Um, here's what I would say. I'm going to piggyback off what Jake said, I think, because we work well together. So after all he talked about was educational videos and all that good stuff and leaning, I want to go harder in on the leaning on your friends. There are people in your circle, especially if you're a real estate agent, think about your top threes. I always say top threes, your top three painters, your top three plumbers, your top three GCs, your top three uh, inspectors, top three title, top three mortgage, right? Think of those folks. Then go through that list of folks and see who has the biggest following and do a collab video with them on this is what to do if you're in trouble. Here's how we can help if you're in trouble. Here's what, like, there's a million ways you can spin those videos. They only need to be two minutes. And what happens when you do a video with somebody else that has a large audience, they're going to share your video out on their platforms. So people will see you. All right, they know Johnny Jones is a mortgage broker, but they also now see you as a real estate agent that understands renovation loans and 
uh, redirecting your IRAs into investments and they go, oh, there's my guy. I need to talk to him or girl. And I need to talk to her. So I would say lean on the networks of the people that you're closest to, man. Share that stuff. Get get on, get in front of camera. And it doesn't have to be self-promotion. It comes from a space of helping others. And when you help others like that on a regular, consistent basis, and more and more people see it because you're leaning on other people's networks, you're going to win. Love it. Love it. I love it. Love it. Nick. You should because that was really good. It was really good. That's why I said I really liked it. <laughs> Anyways. Nick. The two uh, the two websites that I threw up on the screen for gold nuggets that Gene was talking about, uh, howmoneywalks.com. So this goes into correlation of what I talked about earlier about building your uh, your network effect, right? And then having a message that really resonates with people, right? So how many walks actually shows IRS tax records of where people filed their taxes last year versus this year. And you can kind of get a macro idea by county of where people are moving to and from. So I get this question a lot, and this is how I found this site a couple of years ago of, Nick, I wanna advertise people out of state. How do I know who to target? Well, we can do similar stuff inside Facebook where we can uh, retarget people who have visited a location and move back. That's one method. This is another really cool method. So like if I go to Hillsborough County, which is our county here in Tampa, I know that the relocation destination, one of them is Suffolk County in New York. Right. I don't really know where that is. My, my grandparents are from upstate New York, but Suffolk County, maybe uh, Greg, uh, uh, not Greg, but Gene might know where that is. I would I would run an advertisement in Suffolk County talking about how inventory in Tampa is at its all time high with this builder who just op- like spin it a little bit. Right. We know we're in low inventory here, but if here's something that we used to do with an Airbnb, had a client crushing in the Airbnb space last year, two years ago. Okay, and they would advertise a house that was in Brandon, which is 45 minutes to an hour away from the beach as a beach house to people from Virginia and New York and out of state, because to them, driving an hour to the beach was no big deal for us in Tampa. If we can't walk to the beach, it's not a beach house. Right. So it's a, it's a ridiculous joke. They bought this house discounted and advertised it as this awesome beach house. People came in. They were packed all day long. Somebody moving from New York will be perfectly happy with a brand new subdivision that might be just breaking ground and your relationship with that builder has the inventory getting ready to hit like Jake was talking about. You can be that pipeline, finding people from other parts of the country, bringing them here, okay? What's the problem? Problem, agitate, solution. That is your video, like foolproof way of doing a quick little three minute video. Second to that, as far as content is trends.google.com. You can go on that website and actually search a whole bunch of different keywords. And it'll tell you if something is being searched more or less on Google based on what you search for. So go in and just look in your local market and see what's trending in your local market on Google. And if it's trending on Google, then you probably should be talking about it on video, on a podcast talking or in uh, written form. I love trends.google.com. I really do. Oh yeah, this is a uh, Gene or Nick. I'm part of the club. Nice. Sun. Club. Nicely done. Yeah. Nicely done. So I got to tell you a story. Um, my business partner and I, we saw some trends for pillows um, years ago. So we went ahead and created all these cool designs and um, made drop ship print on demand pillows. And then we saw some trends on Google that said people were searching for pillows um, that had ski resorts on them. So we started taking all of the ski hills <laughs> from like Vail and Aspen And we started putting these images on these pillows and we were selling a shit ton of them. And it was funny as hell. And then I got a cease and desist order in the mail from the attorney. (laughs) So we stopped that. But it works. Trending content. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, uh, Greg, can you share my screen real quick? I want to give a shout out to our good friend, Chris Noggle. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and drop some um, knowledge and wealth. So um, this is a book that Chris Noggle went ahead and put together with uh, Brent Kessler. Uh, Chris, you guys might have seen him here on Real Estate Uncensored. He's come over into the Clever Nation. Uh, I'm becoming really fantastic friends with Chris. He's a wonderful human being. He was on. Um, he was the hit show host of Risky Builders on HGTV, and he's the number one money mentor in the United States. So I highly suggest that you go ahead and get this book. It's going to go ahead and change the way that you think about money. 
And um, oh, by the way, this one right here is for Gino. <laughs> <laughs> another thing that I want to. Another thing that I want to tell everybody is that if you're looking for a pleasant way to go ahead and start your day in the morning, um, not just a good cup of Nevada black <laughs> French press coffee, you can also go ahead and get a nice, clean, cool hot shave. That's a joke but that goes way back, man. Duke and Cannon Company. And if you purchase this hot shave clear warming gel, part of the proceeds do go to veterans. Oh, that's so. nice. There we go. That's why we buy this. Not just to make Gene's head feel good. But you have to help the help, help the veterans. And that's the most important thing ever. And uh, if everyone can don their glasses, I believe that would be a good end of the show. We are uh, running at forty six minutes into the show. Uh, I actually wear glasses permanently, so I really can't take them off. Uh, oh, no, Gene, there we go. Do you want your goggles or your glasses? Oh yeah, sure. I don't have glasses. It's the only thing I got. <laughs> Here, I'm, I'm changing it up for you. Last ones were. Oh, he's just see through. No. I got, you got the yellow goggles. All right, all right. No, these all are right. white. They're good. They're white. He's going with safety shades. So, what what what, what is this? Like Men in Black? Like you know, we got Top Gun, Men in Black. I hope like, somebody screenshot this movie. It. Who's screenshotting oh. this? By the way, we're having fun today. This is the marketing roundtable. This is what screenshot people this. expect when they hang out with the boys. All right, I'll screenshot it. Hold on, <laughs> hold on, everybody. All right, everybody, smiles. <laughs> Stupid asses. I love you guys. <laughs> Freaking love you guys. All right, let's do a quick takeaway. We've been on this for 47 minutes, almost 48 minutes. Uh, Gene, where can they find you? What do you do? And how can they put uh, money in your pocket to have a conversation with you? Tell you what, I'm going to do something a little different today. Oh, I do. Your boy will be in Delray Beach on April 20th to the 24th. We're doing the real estate and mortgage world tour down there. Um, yeah, so come see us. Actually, we're gonna have a we're gonna be throwing a credit repair session on Thursday the twenty second, and then that night we're doing a realtor meet and greet uh, somewhere on on the beach in Delray. I don't know exactly where yet, but if you're anywhere near the area, Chris Manka, I would suggest you reach <laughs> out to me to get the information because I'm gonna be down there with my Jordans, with my gold chain, and with some other good stuff too. Wait, uh, when are you going down? When? Yeah. April 20th to 24th. Like 10 day, 15 days, 14 days. Nice. 30 days. And this in Florida? Yeah. Yes, sir. East Florida. Coast, Atlantic Ocean. Exactly. <laughs> how far are you? Two hours? Yeah. Three hours? I'm probably not worth it. Two and a half? I'm probably Send not me an worth Uber. It. Send mm. you an Uber? Black. You. <laughs> yeah, that oh. should only cost about as much as the whole trip. <laughs> <laughs> semi uber black extra sure. large limo <laughs> right that's how you do marketing you roll like a baller all right nick sackis uh who are you where are you from what do you do and how people can get a hold of you yeah from uh from sunny tampa florida if you don't know about it you probably should because everybody's moving here it's absolutely insane i own a little company called get amplified marketing we do everything from website development to lead generation and lead conversion uh, mostly in the real estate space. We do have some clients outside, but if you are looking to amplify your social media presence, that is my specialty. Help you through video marketing, through actually attracting the right people into your world and getting booked appointments on your calendar so you can sell more shit. Yeah, I love selling shit. Love it. Jake Wolf, Papa Wolf. Now tell me about this little thing that you have over here called a uh, semi truck. And this other thing that uh, they call a, a company called Clever with a K. Shh, shh. <laughs> Actually, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to get dressed for the party, uh, come on over to Clever Leads and we'll go ahead and, and get you fixed up right. But I'm actually going to be hanging out with Greg McDaniel because he and I are going to go ahead and do something pretty super awesome in 2021. We are going to be traveling around the country and picking out different areas to go ahead and build and develop uh micro teams in the most perfect marketplaces and help you completely overhaul your whole real estate business put together all of the marketing initiatives all of the powerful unique selling propositions and build your teams in your area so if you're interested get in touch with my man greg mcdaniel 
Thank you very much, guys. Yes, we are looking, we are hiring. We are part of EXP. We are looking to build, we're not going to build the biggest guys. We're really not. Um, we're, we are going to build the most profitable downline uh, in EXP's company. Uh, we have the teams and the people that do it. We have these three ingenious gentlemen here on the show with me today. Uh, we're all working in conjunction with each other, but yet independently, but we're going to bring value to every single one of your guys' lives. Uh, if you guys want to be interested in making passive income, look, the world's going to go Bat shit fucking crazy here in the next couple next couple of months, if not in the next couple of years. Um, there's multiple different reasons. We're not. This is not a political show, so we're not going to get into it. But we all know what I'm talking about. So I just want you guys, if you want to secure some income for you guys, go ahead, reach out to me. Um, my information is on the bottom. Yes, it is a joke about Matt coming to to uh, to clean your car with rocks. Uh, but you know what? If you guys want to do a, a quick uh, co coaching call with me, go ahead and reach out. Area code is nine twenty five nine fifteen. 1978 and kind of see the results I'm getting from working with Mr. Gene Volpe, Mr. Jake Wolf, and Mr. Nick Sackis. So guys, that is what we got going on for you guys today. We love you all to pieces. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, do your jobs for the mother effing love of life. Each one of you guys need to give me a color. It needs to be a three part, three part bow on the show. Left, right, middle. So what do we got? Give me some colors. Uh, Nick, start. Baby blue. Okay. Uh, Jake, let's go with you. Middle. We're going to highlight this thing today. We are totally highlighting the show with highlighter yellow, baby. <laughs> All right. I like it. J and Gene, what about you? Um. Yeah, I'm not picking a color. Fuck <laughs> you. Pick, pick a color. You're off the show. Nope. I'm not doing it. <laughs> And guys, we've had technical difficulties. Gene has been removed from the from the show. Always removed. <laughs> That's why show. I have to go to the bar with Gene just to go ahead and make Gene sure. never learned his colors. It's a no. problem. I have three of them. I've done them all in the last three weeks. I don't want to sound redundant. Well, no one listened to the last three shows, so just pick one. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, let's go silver, like my ice, like my custom ice, y'all. Oh, I thought you were going to go with the cover of your beard. I was okay. just a beard, too, but I didn't want to go there. Wow. We're ending. <laughs> wow. I got some. I got some showing up. Wow. Yeah, don't, <laughs> yeah, don't get ahead of yourself, Sack, because it's, it's coming happening. quick, baby. Hey, guys, I got all y'all's beats on the silver on the beard. It's, 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 I'm a silverback for damn sure. All right. Looks good on you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching the show. We truly appreciate you. This is the Real Estate Marketing Roundtable with Real Estate Uncensored. I have Nick Sackas, Jake Wolf, and Gene Volpe, my three trusted co-hosts. We are going to put a bow on the show. We're going to put a baby blue, a yellow highlighter, and a silver bow on the show. Guys, please go to everywhere you listen to podcasts or watch podcasts. Give us a five-star, not a two-star review, so the algorithm will absolutely allow us to serve this up to more people uh, so we can help more folks get to where they want to be and live the life of their dreams. Guys, we love you beyond belief, and uh, I just, I really can't tell you how much I enjoy hanging out with you guys. Until next time, peace out, ninjas! We're good!